Hey everybody, it's Jason Blahall with Ice Cream Fitness here. Today I want to talk to you guys just a little bit about something I've seen popping up again recently. But hold on, let me give you guys a bicep shot first. Alright, I've noticed again this week popping up in a few places on other people's Facebook pages and articles and other things. I've seen in a couple of places people bring up that Dorian Yates felt that the decline was better than the flat bench for building pecs. And here's where this gets confusing because you've also seen bodybuilders, previous bodybuilding champions through different eras who have said they felt the flat bench was the best chest builder. Another said the incline bench. Others have said dumbbells are either flat decline or incline. Others have said that they felt that weighted dips were their secret to chest development. Every one of these champions has attributed one of those lifts oftentimes to being their primary chest builder and the lift that helped them put the most mass on their pecs. So which one of them is right? All of them. They were all right. And do you know why? No, it's not because they found necessarily what works for them as an individual biomechanically. They found what worked for them psychologically. And let me clarify that point. Every one of those lift variations that I listed, and I technically listed seven different lifts, every one of them, when you look at them from a human physiology and a biomechanics perspective, are capable of recruiting the chest and the pecs as the primary movers, every single one of them. But some of them, it is harder to execute that than others. It comes down to the way that you execute each of those seven movements because it is possible to remove tension off the pecs if you execute them incorrectly for that goal of hypertrophy. Now, let's remember this conversation is purely about hypertrophy and bodybuilding. This does not apply directly to what's going to make you the best power lifter, the best strong man, the best football player. We're talking purely developing size. When you get to that case, there is no one true best lift for any given body part, including your chest. Any lift, and particularly in this case, a heavy compound movement that can be done in a way that stresses your target muscle as the primary mover, is capable of giving you very large amounts of development in that muscle. And in the case of those seven lifts, if you personally fail to build your chest using those seven lifts, any one of them, then the problem is not with the lift, the problem is with you. You are either not executing the lift correctly and in a way that puts the most tension upon your chest, or you are not subjecting it to a significant enough workload or progressive workload in order to stimulate new growth. So it is the way that you are going about it that is the problem, not the lift. And that is almost universally true when it comes to hypertrophy and building given muscles. It is not always so much which lifts you pick, but how you go about executing them. Because there are a dozen different ways to build any given muscle through different lifts, through combinations of isolation movements, combinations of compound movements, mixing and matching them, assorted lifts. Every one of them can still achieve maximum development per week and per month out of the year. All of those methods are physiologically capable of doing them. It comes down to are you executing them correctly? So in short, Every single one of those champions who said each one of those different lifts was what was the secret to their success in building that muscle, every one of them were right. And if every one of them had switched to a different lift on that list and put the same focus into it and learned to use it correctly and for their body learned how to find the proper bar path, range of motion, elbow position, scapula position, and everything else to properly stimulate that muscle, they all would have gotten probably just as good a development with a different lift. It comes down to execution of the movement and the way that you go about progressing. That is everything in hypertrophy. So hopefully that clarified a few points. And that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.